Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the model shop. This is it, the final episode of our 1700 scale Bismarck build. Uh, we wrap up the main guns in this episode, uh, put everything back together, put the blast bags on using the Millie putt. I've never done that before. Uh, give it a final coat of paint and put it on uh, its display base. Um, for those of you who want to just skip right to the end and see it, go ahead and check out this timer. Skip to this timer right here on the little red slidey bar and you can check that out. I'm gonna talk for a couple minutes about a couple different things. Um, first off, this was a fun build. It's in 1700 scale. Uh, it's, it's not the first time I've built in this scale, but I think the last time I did, I was probably seven years old. So um, yeah, a really long time ago. Uh, it was fun. I understand why a lot of people do this. It was It's small. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can pack a ton of detail in there if you want to. Uh, there's a, a much better version of this kit coming out soon. If you do a little searching around, you'll find out about um, in 1700 scale. I do recommend that kit versus the Atelier one uh, in the future if you're thinking about doing this build. Um, the paint scheme was a lot of fun. I'm really glad I went with the yellow turret tops versus just your regular gray, what everybody does because it's just another Bismarck build at that point. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, I wanted to do something that I thought was visually interesting. Um, I did run out of steam at the end of this build, and what I mean by that is I just kind of got tired of it. Uh, and maybe that's just because of the way life was and my work schedule and everything like that. I was having a hard time digging deep to, to pull it all together. Uh, I also did not go as crazy with the detail as I could have. Um, and you'll see that at the end of the video, there's little super glue marks that I zoom in really close to check out. Um, there's little imperfections with the paint, the blast bags. This is the first time I've ever done it this way. I'm very pleased with the results. Uh, I think it's a viable option. I recommend it to everyone. I think mine are a little big, and I think that the detail on them uh, could have, well, it absolutely could have been better. Um, but it's not bad. And that's the other thing. This build is, it's this big. So I, I enjoyed it for the most part, putting it together until, like I said, I, I, I kind of didn't want to work on it anymore and and that is the thing like this is supposed to be a hobby and it's supposed to be fun you know if it's not fun don't do it life's short and you should be enjoying your free time completely not fighting and struggling with everything there's plenty of that happening every day so i feel like it's okay to show that it's okay to show this model and also to say to everyone, this is not my best work that I have ever done. I wouldn't put this in a in a model show and expect to win anything, except a few people going, oh, look, you painted the turret tops yellow. What'd you do that for? That's, that's what I would expect. But I still enjoyed it and it's finished. And the average person's gonna look at it, even up close, even if you get within like six inches of it, like you really stick your face up to it, it is hard to make out the small details. And so the point of that is, no, I didn't spend my entire life trying to get everything exactly perfect. I did a good job, and then I also got the model done. So I have something to show for my efforts here. And I feel like that's an important part of modeling is that uh, you shouldn't worry about every single little detail. In fact, I've told a couple of my modeling friends that um, one of the things I, one of my personal rules for every build is to pick one thing about that build that you really want to master, that you really want to do right. And the whole rest of the build, who cares? Just put it together and paint it and you're done. But get that one element right. Because then what happens is on the next build, you've mastered that particular skill or thing that you're working on and you don't have to struggle to make it happen. You just you just do it. And then you pick something new that you want to get right. On this one, I was I was going for a different paint scheme. Yeah, the whole idea was just to do something different and to try to work out the blast bags. I knew I was going to have to do that from scratch. And I feel like it worked out okay. And so I'm, I'm happy with this piece. I've never built a Bismarck model before. Now I have one. Uh, someday we might do something bigger. So that's my little rant about that. Uh, and then 
Just a quick little shout out back to Brian at BAS uh, Dry Dock. I did receive your Christmas card from you and your family. Thank you very much. That was very kind of you. And I hope that uh, you guys have a blessed year and uh, a great holiday season. And I, I think this is great. I kind of feel bad. Well, I'm a, I'm a terrible card writing guy anyway, but I think it's great in the community when people reach out to each other and you know, encourage one another and, and then we have fun and create a positive environment for everyone to, to do this. Because we all have different skill sets, uh, we all have different priorities, uh, but the goal is, you know, doing something that we enjoy, researching something we like, and uh, for the most part I don't think we're all rivet counters. But if you are a rivet counter, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, just don't count my rivets because they're off. You're wasting your time. Anyway, that's it. Uh, let's get into the rest of the build. And uh, this is the final episode for this one. I hope you all have a happy new year. And uh, it might be a little while before I get back to you with another video series. But I've got some good things cooking here. I think uh, I think I have some good ideas for the next build. All right, take care. So let's get into the final stages of trying to wrap this guy up. Uh, these are the cranes. Uh, mocked up. I set this pitch angle um, after putting it on the model just to figure out what way it would fit. Uh, then we've got some more guns up here. Um, I don't know if these are heavy anti-aircraft guns. Uh, I'm not sure. I apologize. I didn't do any research. But anyway, uh, they're assembled. we got to get them painted up. And then we'll do some weathering and get them installed. And then we've got some final um, smaller guns that get put in place that we'll be moving on to next. So uh, let's let these dry and paint. Moving on. Okay, next part here. So we've gone ahead and by we I mean me. Use so something you can see with. Uh, we've gone ahead and installed some of the... Uh, well, secondary armament, and then if we zoom in here, uh, you can see we put in some of the anti-aircraft guns and weathered them a little bit. Um, some of the other guns up here. And then we've got our pieces in the back right there. So, uh, they look nice, and they're not my favorite. I weathered them, I tried to do something reasonable with them. Um, they kind of get lost in the detail when you back out, but that's that's okay. I am glad that I painted the uh, tops of the turrets yellow. They pop out um, when we get to the uh, main armament. It's going to look really nice. The next thing I have to do though is wrap up these cranes, which is just going to be some additional uh, weathering detail. They are right here in the background. Yeah, let's move this out of the way. And I, I looked online. It looks like um, you got a pair of cables running from the back here up to the top on both sides. I think I'll do that with some easy line. Um, it's debatable whether or not at this scale you would actually see it, but we'll throw it on there and take a look. If it's ridiculous, I'll take it off. Uh, if I want, you know, and then we'll. Yeah, the next thing to do is just mount it to the crane. So, or mount it to the ship, sorry. So, yeah, we'll do a little weathering, put the easy line on, see how it looks, and get it mounted to the ship. All right, here we go. So here we are. I put the easy line uh, on the crane. There's there's two lines going from the back up to the front. Um, I just referenced an image from World of Warships on the turpits to get this. If we zoom in, you'll see I hit it with some rust uh, from Tamiya. You'll also see that, zoomed in, these are not very impressive cranes. They're just, you know, plastic. <laughs> the styrene is just kind of what you expect. Um, but, zoom back out, put it by the ship. This is I mean, this is what it looks like. It's it's really not that bad. The rust might be a little heavy, uh, and if that's the case, um, I'll just go ahead and wipe some of it off or touch it up with some paint. But these get mounted up right in there, so I'm going to go ahead and do that next, and uh, then we'll take a look at it and see how the whole thing kind of is coming together. And there we go. Cranes installed. Uh, we're zoomed out pretty far. I did touch it up a little bit um, 
just to dial back the intensity of the rust, but uh, let's roll on in here. And you can see it's kind of the stowed position. Uh, the easy line I think looks nice. I think it adds just a little bit. And I think it looks good. There's the other one. If I square it up, you can see we're pretty evenly stowed. Uh, a little bit more rust on this one, but I think it looks nice. So, uh, that takes care of that. Um, we've put in, well, little machine guns, a couple more heavy duty anti aircraft guns, um, pretty much a couple machine guns back there. They need a little touching up. All the secondary armament is in place. So I'm going to double check our instructions, but we should be to the point where I just need to put the railing in along the entire length of the hull. There's a little detail that goes on the bow uh, and on the stern. I don't have like a photo etch replacement. Well, that's a cool view. Ship looks sharp from there, doesn't it? Uh, sorry, they don't have a neat um, photo etch replacement. I thought about maybe making my own uh, from that thin wire. I'll just have to take a look and see what I feel like doing there. And then um, then we have to finish up the main guns, which I told you is going to involve making blast bags for it. Uh, lastly, we'll take the tape off the bottom that I've been using to protect the hull as I scoot it around, and we'll get it mounted up on its base. So, um, next step, yeah, let's just see what the next step is. Hey ho, here we are back next day. Alright, I guess I decided to uh, work on the main guns. So, we need blast bags. You can see zoomed way out here that I've started some. Uh, I have elected to use Milliput, super fine white. Yes, I got Hobby Lobby 1399. Uh, this is a super fine stuff if you get the regular Milliput, which I guess is a little bit coarser. It's about seven bucks from them. And then just a courtesy reminder, when you go to Hobby Lobby, uh, if you go online and just do a quick Google search, Hobby Lobby coupon, you can get 40% off any one product. So save some money there. All right, uh, I've never used this stuff before. It's just a, um, I'll just show you a peek right here. There's there's two bags. It's two parts. It's kind of like uh, Play-Doh. And you just take it and you mix it together 50-50. I made a little ball of it here. Um, and you just knead it together. The working time, it's, it's tacky right now for the first half hour. Then after that, the instructions say you got to let it cure uh, about two to three hours. And then it'll be hard. You can sand it, chisel it, sculpt it, drill on it, whatever you'd like. So that's what we're doing to shape our blast bags. Um, as you can see, we don't have anything in there right now. And the idea is that the bags, they attach to the top edge here. And then in this position, uh, they kind of droop down to about here on the barrel. And then you would have an excess hanging off of the bottom. Uh, so that you know it could lift up and traverse. So let's take a look at this one. This is real rough. This is my first attempt, and as you can see, man, it's hard to tell with this light. Here we go. It it is drooped down. It's kind of washing out here. I have a indentation here in the middle, so it's secured along the outside edge. It's supposed to pull taut and then dip down. There's a little bit way extra on that one. And then we've got um, a little bit sagging off of the bottom. And then, let's see, if I hold it like that, maybe you can kind of see that this is, um, I tried to push it all over to sag directly under the middle here. Um, this side is a little bit more difficult to work with. I'm going to keep playing with it. But the idea is just to get it roughed in basically like that. Uh, then I'm going to, once it's dried, I'll sand it to get it a little more streamlined along the edges here. And I'll check on it because at a certain point it'll stop being tacky and you can just push it and kind of mold it around. Um, let me see if I put a shadow. There you go. If I put a shadow, you can kind of see some ripples in the middle of it. Uh, trying to be canvasy esque um, with this bright light, it's hard to make out. But 
that's the idea. And I also chose white to help me visualize what I was going to do. I will probably paint over that with either white or a light gray. And I'll extend it out, uh, the paint, to the appropriate amount on the barrel. Like right here, for example, come out to here and even line and go around it. So it's going to be a combination of mediums to get these blast bags to look blast baggy. Um, that's the idea. Let me show you a picture here of the fo uh, poster that came with the ship. I'm just using that to model after the effect. Alright, here's a poster. Obviously this is just an artist's interpretation. But you can see what we're going for there with the blast bags. Um, sorry that was really jerky, but that's what we're trying to do. So hopefully we can achieve that effect. So I'm going to go ahead and work on uh, the rest of the guns, and yeah, I'll get back to you with the finished product. All right. So as to not give to not give too much of the ship away here for the final review. Review. Sorry. Uh, this is a little improvement I made to the back of the ship. There's supposed to be um, a big plastic part here, and it's ginormous. So I took some the wire that I'd used previously and fashioned uh, well I don't know what this is called you hang the flag off there and it's a little mini mast so anyway I put one here and then I put one up on the bow let's take a look at that alright and here's the little uh, stand up in the bow the forward mast three pieces same thing I hooked up the uh, thin wire and tried to make like three pieces See, I had a little trouble with the photo etch railing there, uh, but yeah, it, it's a it's a marked improvement scale wise over the plastic part, um, and just for scale purposes, we'll put it right behind it here. That's a dime. That's my thumb, obviously. So it's it's really small. Anyway, uh, we're gonna paint that up and finish up the railing wrap up the guns and get this thing together. Let's move along here. Back in action. So this is the blast bags installed. Um, I put a wash over them and the uh, turrets just to show a little bit of wear and tear um, under this bright light. It's all kind of hidden but if I put a shadow there you can see some of the grit is kind of in place. The bags, they're not perfect uh, at all. And I realize that. They're not the best. They're also the first ones I have ever done. And also, let's remember that they are teeny, teeny, tiny. Like, that's a dime. So, you know, you're going to look at them from here. And from here, they look fantastic, I think. So, Gonna let the wash dry up. Uh, I kind of went with a heavier wash. So you can see it kind of brings out a little bit more of the greener color in the in the um, yellow from here by darkening it. And obviously there's a green background. But these were worn, uh, were painted, and then had uh, heavy seas hit them quite a bit. And this was kind of post battle with the hood. So anyway, I just think it looks better. So uh, last thing to do is to put these on the ship, glue them in place, and I'm going to give the ship a uh, one more hit of uh, a flat clear because I did do a little bit of weathering to seal everything up. We're going to mount it and that'll be it. We'll call it done. So let's go to the final product. And here we go ladies and gents. This is the finished uh, Bismarck with the World of Warships um, Chase the Bismarck theme with our yellow turrets on top. This is all in uh, 1700 scale. Uh, some of you are checking out this out for the very very first time. You've skipped right to this point in the video. You want to know why are the turret tops yellow? Uh, when the Bismarck was uh, in its last couple days an order was sent to the ship to paint the tops of the turrets yellow. These are for identification purposes because they were going to be uh, sailing into Luftwaffe controlled waters this would make the ship easily identifiable and then the Luftwaffe wouldn't dive bomb it. Um, there were confirmation, well supposedly 
from the sailors who survived, they said in interviews that yes, they did paint the turret tops yellow uh, in the day before the ship was sunk. However, it is inaccurate if you're going to go for accuracy to say that um, these turrets were painted yellow because they did, but as you know, the Bismarck had poor sea handling capabilities and the bow was low from previous torpedo attacks, so they said most of this paint had actually washed off. The only paint remaining was on the top turrets. Obviously, this build's not for accuracy. I forgot to leave the uh, swastikas on and everything. The whole point of this build, obviously, was just for fun. And uh, to build a ship that I thought looked cool and wasn't your regular run-of-the-mill um, Bismarck. So, let's zoom in a little bit here. Did a wash. Um, hit the whole thing with a uh, clear matte finish when it's done. Uh, the reason for that is, let's see if I can zoom in on a good spot. This is a good example right there. See the, uh, this little bit of excess of super glue right there. I didn't sand it off or fiddle around with that, but it'll appear glossy. And if you hit it with a uh, clear flat, it takes that glossiness off. So you don't have to worry about anything. I put it on um, a base similar to what I did with the Arizona build. As you can see, it sits up a little high, and I thought about having it just a hair lower. It probably could have stood to be an uh, eighth inch lower, but I feel also like this does a good job of holding the ship up and presenting it up in the air, clear away from the base. The base is not detracting from it in any way, and uh, you get a good you can get a good look at it. Um, all the railings installed along the whole thing. That wasn't too much trouble. So, yeah, this is it. It, it looks nice. Uh, and it's not big. I mean, these are my hands. The whole thing fits. This is um, 15 inches across right here. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice size ship. I understand why a lot of you build uh, 1 700 scale ships. They don't take up a bunch of room. You don't have to spend forever building them. You can get carried away with the detail if you want and if you don't want to which is kinda how I was on this build uh, it's okay because most people will see it from here so let's do one more look uh, I'm gonna take the camera off of the stand and get in pretty close so you can see uh, the detail and how um, well this isn't the best job I've ever done and that's okay you'll be able to see it uh, but I think it's important to show that from here, it looks great. I think it looks fantastic. I think it's a pretty cool model. So let's go ahead and get in up close. All right, here we go. I'm going to do the best I can to be stable, and I'm going to get right up close here. This is the um, mast that I made myself up here on the bow. Uh, it looks a little bit more to scale than what we had going on with the kit supplied parts you can see the anchor chain that is a kit supply part turned out nicely uh, there's our blast bags a little bit of wear and tear on the guns uh, I did put the whole thing like in a bath or I'm sorry a, a wash with um, kind of a blue it's like a bluish color on the gray to accent some of the panel lines here and you can kind of make some of that out there's the ship's boats uh, the Easy line on the crane, you can see right here, uh, turned out all right. Just add a little bit extra detail there. Here's our float plane. No decals provided for it. It would have been nice to put a couple German crosses on the wings, but that's okay. Uh, the metal masts and crow's nest, both forward and aft. Those are a nice little detail set that came along with. wasn't was a nice addition. Um, again, I've complained a gazillion times throughout this build that I wish I had acquired Photo Etch 1 700 scale machine guns instead of these big giant looking things that look like little mini rocket launchers instead. Uh, let's see. Is our anchor detail? That anchor chain right there in the back is correct. It's a little big. That doghouse is not correct, but I liked it. 
Here's my aft uh, mast, which you put a flag on. I made that from scratch from wire as well. Here's our ship's screws. Uh, yeah, turns out nice. Here is the area where I have my paint debacle, and I did and did not do a good job of cleaning that up. Uh, especially up close here, it looks terrible. But get to right there, and it looks just fine. Zoom in, this is the other side of the catapult. Um, the hanger is right down in here. There you go, and that's the kit supplied part. I thought it looked better than the photo etch piece. It's a little more prominent, but from here you can you can see it. There's some sort of detail there versus there being uh, nothing at all. And then there's like right under there by the boats, you can see that detail as well. There were photo etch replacements for that, but if I put them on, it would just kind of look like flat uh, pieces. So. Here's our radar, main bridge, direction finders. You can kind of make out a little bit of the wash that I did right there. Um, here is a good example of a bad job with the gloppy super glue. Um, you know, so part of the, okay, here's the reason for leaving that. See the stripe underneath there? I had to paint that on and then paint over it. and. Cleaning that off would have been very difficult without messing up the paint. And when you're right here, you can't even see it. That's why I left it. There's a little... I'm doing a balance here, a little dance between uh, spending my whole life on a teeny, teeny, tiny model that you got to get really, really zoomed in on to notice some of these details. And then you got the colors on the cap stands versus... Um, Getting the thing done and enjoying the ship. So once again, there we go. There's our Bismarck. This was a fun little build. It's a different color scheme. I think it looks cool from the back right here. It's a it's a gorgeous looking ship. It's got a great haul on it. Um, and I'm glad I was able to do this. Now I realize maybe a uh, 1 200 scale version of this might be in order someday. Not sure yet. I haven't decided. I've uh, got a bunch of things going on in life uh, in the next couple of months. Also, my work schedule for next month is complete poo poo. Uh, I'm only going to be home 11 days. Doesn't leave me a lot of time to uh, work on models. But I got a couple ideas for my next build and they'll probably be large scale ships for sure as I think is I think this is the direction we're gonna go in again. So alright, for those of you who've stuck along this far to watch the whole thing, thank you very much for watching. Uh, those of you who just skipped to the end here to check out the finished model, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe and ask questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them since uh, you're probably wondering why this ship looks the way that it does. Um, it's all explained in the previous videos, but I'll be happy to just tell you guys from here. So anyway, alright, that's it. Hope everyone has a great and happy new year. Take care.